Welcome back to Country Cow Designs. I'm Jo and this is the preparation video for the two-faced backpack. So this is a new backpack sewing pattern that we're going to release on the 5th of January 2024. The sewing pattern will then be available from countrycowdesigns.com. So the purpose of this video is just to give you an overview of what's involved in the pattern, recommended fabrics, how to navigate the pattern if you've never used one of ours before, um, and different tips on how to make things a little bit easier. This is an advanced sewing pattern, so if you don't have a, like a lot of experience in bag making, then hopefully this video will just give you a really good overview of what's involved before you start. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to print out the cutting and interfacing chart. So this is pages 25 and 26 of the pattern. Now in the pattern is a preparation section that tells you what to print, how to print it, all that sort of thing. But it also gives you more information here just to sort of recap it. So as with all of our patterns, we have this cutting and interfacing chart. Now what this does is it gives you an overview of everything that you're going to need to prepare before you can start. So we've got the different fabrics. We've got the first exterior and second exterior fabrics. That's because this backpack is going to be two-faced. We're going to have two fronts effectively rather than a front and a back. One is the first exterior fabric, one is the second. Now you can see there's little asterisk here which just says for the second exterior fabric use cotton or canvas for an easier sew. Now there is going to be a really difficult sew especially around these corners with the zip. If you use cotton this is going to be so much easier. If you decide to use something like vinyl, um, wax canvas, cork, you are going to make things harder for yourself. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing your fabrics. It also mentions to add medium weight woven interfacing to all of your cotton pieces. So I've already done that to all of mine. The only exception is this zip tab here. Now when you've got the pattern, you're going to have all of the measurements here in imperial, which is inches, and in metric, which is centimetres. So what you can do, if you want to save on printing, it gives you the pattern pieces that you need to print, but actually pages 40 to 47 are all rectangles. So the rectangles, what we've done is we've shaded them. So then you know you don't need to print that pattern piece, you don't need to cut out the paper pattern piece, you can just cut it from the measurements instead if you prefer. But we know everyone's different, so we've, we've arranged all of the fabric pattern pieces just in case. So we've got the, the exterior fabrics, then we've got a cork, vinyl or leather accent. Now this is for little accents on the pattern that are going to have raw edges on show. So you want to make sure that you're using a fabric such as cork or vinyl or leather because it's going to, you know, allow for you to have raw edges. Now for the side pockets and also the internal pocket, we need some stretch mesh fabric. So I'm using By Annie's stretch mesh fabric. This is really easy to get hold of um, in most of your local sewing shops and online. That's why I've gone with that. I know it's good quality as well. Um, it's a two way stretch. So we've got a nice little stretch width ways, but we've got very minimal stretch going that way. When you're cutting out your pattern pieces, pay attention to the pattern piece. It says which way the stretch needs to go that it needs to go width ways. If this is your first time working with stretch fabrics, the easiest way to cut it, in my opinion, is on a mat. So you, you kind of just line it up on your mat, the whole thing, and then just use a rotary cutter to cut it to size, following the grid lines for your measurements. Um, once you start like putting a quilting ruler on, sometimes it can start shifting and stretching and things like that. So for me, that's my preferred way of cutting. Now bear in mind when you're doing all of this, as you cut each thing out, you can just go ahead and tick it off. There's also labels included, so you can attach a label to each pattern piece and that way you don't forget what it is. Another alternative is that on the back of the pattern piece, you could just put the pattern piece letter and then you'll know what, what piece this is when you need to refer back to it later. On the other side of the cutting chart, we have got the lining fabric. Again, it says to add your interfacing except for the zip tab. And a lot of these pieces are rectangles, so they're shaded, which means you can just cut them from the measurements if you want to. Stabilizers, we've got another note here, this hash here. 
If you're using thick or stiff fabric for the exterior, you may wish to change the foam stabilizer to a lighter alternative, such as Thermalam High Loft Fleece. So if you're using something like cork or wax canvas for your exterior fabric, and it's, you know, it's quite thick and quite stiff, it's creating its own structure, then you're probably going to want to reduce the stabilizer. The foam stabilizer that we've recommended is fantastic for things like cotton or a flexible vinyl. So for the tutorial video, I'm going to use this flexible vinyl. You can see it's, it's not stiff. It's not kind of structured. And I'm also going to be using this cotton. So this is a water resistant cotton canvas. So for this, the foam is an ideal stabilizer. Now we've also got an optional extra stabilizer, which is Peltex for the base. Now I love my bag bases to be nice and sturdy. I don't want them to be sagging once there's stuff in my bag. That's what Peltex is great for. It's kind of like cardboardy. Um, so I personally like to add this in, but that is optional. I know it's an extra expense getting another stabilizer. So um, if you want to just stick with the foam, it will be fine. Just if you'd like an extra stable base, this is great. Okay, so next on the cutting chart is the notions that you need to prepare. So I've got my wide elastic, which is just like a waistband elastic. This is gonna be for the drinks holder, the drinks bottle inside the bag. Then we've got fold over elastic, which is gonna go on top of these stretch mesh fabrics. So again, I just got this from Bayani's. Um, Bayani's does like matching colors for their fold over elastic and their mesh. So that's really handy. And then I've got my zips cut. So make sure that you cut these zips to the exact length that is stated here. So what I'm using is a continuous zip tape. That means that I can put a zip pull on each side for my main zip and we can have two zips closing towards each other. So I've cut all of my zips according to the measurements here. You're gonna have four zips in total. You're gonna have your binding as well. So you could use a double fold cotton bias binding if you want, that's quite easily available on places like Amazon, you want it to be half an inch after it's folded. Alternatively, there's loads of videos out there for making your own binding. Or for me, I actually prefer to use waterproof canvas. So you'll see that in the tutorial video, I just cut it one inch wide and then I, and then I just fold it around the seam. It's a really nice, easy way to do it. Then I've also got the webbing for the straps and also for the grab handle. And for my hardware, I've got rivets. These are optional, but I do like the extra security that rivets offer. I've got my two one inch rectangle rings, two one inch strap sliders for the straps. And I've got a few zips because I haven't quite decided which style zip I want to use for each pocket and things like that yet. But we're gonna have two on the main zip closure, two for the side pockets, and then one for the interior zip pocket. When you're cutting out your bag, there's a few things you can choose from. Now we've got these expandable pockets on the side, but really these are optional. It's not gonna change the bag if you decide, hey, I don't wanna have those. So that's something that you could decide to skip if you wanna make this an easier and quicker make. Um, on the inside as well, pretty much all these pockets are optional. There's not gonna be any harm in if you decide I wanna remove those. Um, and then you've got, here we've got the card slots. So we've got two there, another two there, and then we've got a slip pocket for your phone. So this is the card and slip pocket option. Um, if you're gonna do this option, then you wanna make sure that you cut out the card slots and slip and the card slots sides. But as it says here, then you're gonna not bother cutting E. So that's optional. You can either just have this plain or you can have this pocket option. Now, the other thing to pay attention to is the zip on the binding. Now, I know this is gonna be controversial for a lot of you, but we've worked on this for quite a long time. We've gone through a lot of prototypes. Now, you might be able to see here, you can see there's, there's quite a bit of creasing down here um, on this, these corners. Obviously, we want to avoid that at all costs. So I wanna show you um, the difference here. So hopefully you can see there's no creasing there but lots of creasing here. So this is because we decided to change and add the binding to the zip. So let me show you the difference. This one, obviously it's gonna look better actually if your binding is the same color as your zip, it won't then be noticeable. 
um, but it makes it a little difference to the construction. Now in the pattern we include the two options, you can do it either way. This is the version without the binding on the zip, okay? Now what happens is, because the lining fabric is on the inside of the zip and the exterior fabric is on the outside, you end up with this not fitting correctly for the lining. So you'd think, well, let's make that smaller. But if you make that smaller, um, what it's gonna do is make the lining bit wider. So then you think, well, I'll make the outside bit smaller too. Then it's not gonna fit overall. So there's not really any way around this to get this, the hole to be the correct size. If you've made a bag similar to this before, but they often kind of go into the seams instead of coming around as a full circle, then you'll notice that when you get to the bottom, you always have extra lining fabric hanging off, and that's for this reason. So if you decide to do it like this without binding, what you end up with is some big creases in the lining. It's, no, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be able to get that on camera. Um, particularly around these bottom corners, you're gonna end up with a load of creasing. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna kind of pull this all in and create some creasing on the outside of the bag as well. We really don't want that. So that is why we have gone with binding on the zip, which is a little bit controversial, but match the binding to your zip color. It will be a lot less noticeable. It will give you a beautiful finish on the outside. And also it's gonna be much easier when you're constructing it as well. So just bear that in mind as well. So yes, the pattern does include both options for those of you that really do not want to put binding on your zip. But personally, I definitely re recommend putting the binding on the zip and that's what we'll be doing in the video tutorial. So I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of the bag as a whole. This is the main closure. You, you do actually have in the pattern photos laying, laying out, you know, every pattern piece, but this is the main closure and this is the frame that goes around it. This is the frame piece. Got your base overlay on the bottom there and your two exterior gussets that are joined together in the center with your expanding pocket on either side. And then on the back, this is just your main panel. So when you're wearing this um, and you want it to be an anti-theft backpack, you simply wear it so that this is on show to the world and nobody can get into your bag. Then on the inside, you've got the main closure, which you can add the card slots to if you want to. You've got the stretchy slip pocket and the zip pocket. And then coming out lower on the gusset, you've just got your strap tabs there, which are attaching to your straps. And of course you've got your grab handle on top. So if you're in any doubt about the pattern pieces and which pieces to choose for which fabric, just check out the pattern layout photos. It will really help you out. Now, this is what your pattern pieces are gonna look like once you've printed them out. Make sure you check your test square before you do anything. So that's on pattern piece A. If um, you're having any problems with this, just make sure that you're printing it on an Adobe, on a computer. Mobile devices do tend to like resize things. If you're printing from a web browser, it will quite often resize it. So Adobe on a computer is the best option. Make sure it's printing at no scale change. Like it will be called actual, actual size no scaling or 100%. Those are the three things that it may call it. Once you've printed each pattern piece, you assemble it using these arrows as a guide. So you're not overlapping the pattern pieces, you're just joining them up to each other. Make sure your symbols match, then you know that you're matching to the correct pattern piece. Heart to heart, star, star to star, that sort of thing. You can also then check that your measurements that you'll have on every pattern piece is correct that will be the total height and the total width at its widest and tallest point. And now just a quick overview of the tools I'm gonna to be using. So I've got a lovely cutting mat. I've got a slightly larger one as well when I'm doing bigger pattern pieces. Um, and then I like to use a quilting ruler and a rotary cutter to cut out most of my pattern pieces. I'm also gonna have a couple of other size quilting rulers just handy because that's really helpful during the pattern. I've got a fabric marking pen. This is an erasable fabric marking pen. There's loads available. You get ones that are raised with air, are raised with heat, are raised with water. Um, so just choose one that works for you. Make sure that you always test it on a scrap piece of your fabric before you start marking your bag, just in case. I'm also gonna have a lighter because um, I like to just singe the ends of the zip and the webbing because it's nylon and that will just make sure that it seals the end and it doesn't fray. 
I've got a seam roller in case I need to like roll and press any seams, especially this is great if you have a fabric that can't be pressed with an iron. I've got a pair of pinking shears and a pair of fabric scissors just in case I need those. These are great if you are um, doing curves and things and you just want to cut down the bulk. But not necessary, just an extra added benefit. We are going to need something as we go just to stick the odd thing down. So I've got some double sided tape and I've also got some fabric glue. Both of these are good options. Um, if you're using either of these, I would definitely recommend having a Microtex needle or a super universal needle. Both of those needles have a special coating on them that doesn't stick to adhesive. I've got a little turning tool, which is quite handy. And then I'm going to have some wonder clips, which are just great for holding things in place while we're working. So I think that's everything I'm going to need for constructing this bag. As I said, the sewing pattern will be available from the 5th of January on our website countrycowdesigns.com and then you'll be able to make this bag along with me, but I hope this has given you all of the information that you need to get prepared. <laughs>